are going to start off with two speakers, uh, Patricia Eddings and Kelly Belcher. They are senior trace analysts at the Tarrant County Medical Examiners, and they are going to be talking about processing of deceased bodies by trace evidence examiners in a morgue setting. Perfect for a breakfast talk. Thank you very much, Sandra, and thank you to NIJ and the FBI and all others involved in getting us here for this presentation this morning. Has it been a great week or what? That's my little attempt to hear applause, okay? All right. Um, we are in a unique setting in Tarrant County, and by the way, Tarrant County is Fort Worth, Texas, and Texas is a really big place. Yes, and it's very hot there right now. Um, we have been brought into doing death investigation in a little bit unusual way because of our history, because of my history. I am very old. That's just no getting around that. Uh, we'll talk more about that as we go along. And I want to share with you this morning some of the things that have come out of being in that office and being involved directly with the, the bodies. I think we need to, before we really get started into this this morning, we need to take a poll. I need to know who you are as far as your relationship to dead bodies. <laughs> you know. How many, yeah. <laughs> How many of you have worked crime scenes before in some capacity? A lot of you. Okay, that's good. How many of you have worked, have collected evidence from deceased bodies? All right, I'm very impressed. How many of you collect evidence from dead bodies on a routine basis? Ah, <laughs> well, that's why we're doing this this morning. <laughs> okay, Tarrant County in 2007, I just pulled up some quick statistics this morning, we had about uh, over 1,100 autopsies that were submitted to our morgue um, that were not necessarily homicides. Well, of that number, 120 were homicides. We also had additional cases that weren't lumped into that sum. So somewhere in the neighborhood in 2007 of 150 cases. We are being called out on probably about 50 to 70 of those cases. This is growing very tremendously in our lab. One of our problems is you're looking at the entire trace evidence section of the Fort Worth <laughs> Medical Examiner's Office. And, and that in itself is a little unique because we are attached to a medical examiner's office. We are try to be as full service uh, trace evidence examinations as we can be with doing this responsibility of having to go to the morgue. And we're going to walk you through what we do a as we uh, do our examinations in the morgue. And when a body comes into the morgue, there are a lot of things that our pathologists request from people. Um, we have forensic identification. Of course, that's the number one entity. We've got to identify this individual. In Texas, it takes less than 24 hours right now. I always tell my students it's like putting a putting your brisket in the oven and baking it when you put a car when you put a body in the back of a car for like a 12 hour period when the temperature is 110. So we have decompositional problems <coughs> very very readily there, and we have to address those. We have to try to identify these individuals. Of course, lots of other car crashes and all kinds of things that make bodies difficult to identify. So we have a forensic odontologist that heads up our identification team. That's one of the ancillary uh, processes in our morgue. This forensic uh, odontologist also has an anthropologist and a fingerprint examiner to help them. And this, I don't have time to go into a lot of detail on that kind of thing this morning. You know how that works though. So we have those people that come in. They're coming in after we do our trace evidence recovery. Nobody touches the body till we come in. We also have the forensic anthropologist if the case 
of course, his bones. They're going to do a lot of other things besides just assistant identification. They're going to do race and age determinations and look for trauma and all of those other kinds of things that they do. And the latent fingerprint examiners, if the body is not decomposed, they're going to eventually potentially attempt to get latent fingerprints from the body if the case history dictates that. And then there's us. We are the trace evidence assistance team. And what that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Of course, it all goes back to all of our heroes. You know, Edmund was hard. He teaches us. He's taught us through his work what can be there. We've seen phenomenal information exchanged this week as every time we get together, we understand how many things can be left behind. But somebody has to be there to collect it for it to be valuable to us. How did we get started in this? Well, I came to Tarrant County in 1990. I had been in a crime lab in Mississippi, <coughs> excuse me, many years before, and they decided that they were going to finally have a forensic pathology service there. They were going to have a medical examiner's office, and I became part of that team. And we were trying to show the state of Mississippi how wonderful forensic pathology was going to be. And I assisted with well over a thousand forensic autopsies during that year and a half that that office existed before the pathologist I w was working with left, and ultimately I left as well. But I learned a lot about forensic pathology during that time, so I had experience with dead bodies. And when I came to Tarrant County in 1990, I had one of the forensic pathologists that came to me and said, basically he had something on a case and he wanted me to look at it. And he said, is there any chance I could get you to come to the morgue? And I said, well, yeah. He said, really? You know, that was something that was unexpected. They didn't really think we would come down there. Uh, but I more, was more than happy to come and look at what he had. There were some valuable fibers and other things. You know, I, he asked me to look at one thing. I was pointing out several other things. He was like, oh, wow, I didn't see that. Oh, wow, I didn't see that. And at that moment, it hit them, boy, these people could help us out. And the thing is, how many of you know forensic pathologists? Only two people know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, how many people are willing to admit that they're not your ordinary person, right? <laughs> <coughs> Very lovingly said, okay, and stated, some of the most brilliant people I've ever met, but they're very busy with other things. And sometimes the time they're not going to be able to, don't to uh, give the time that we feel like is probably necessary to properly collect trace evidentiary materials from a body. So from 1990 till the present time, we are routinely requested to come to the morgue because we're right there. And from our vantage point, we are looking at this dead body, this deceased body, as a crime scene. Do you all agree? It is a crime scene. We have to go, how many, you, you, goodness gracious, you all raised your hands, you've been to crime scene. You know the protocol that must be in place to work a crime scene properly. We have steps. The order of those steps are dictated by the case itself, but they're basic 12 steps or whatever. I, you know, the FBI has that on their website of all of the things that must be done to accomplish the proper evaluation of a crime scene. So that's what we do with our deceased bodies. We're basically going through this scheme where we start, of course, we get a little bit of the history. You know, I have to know. Is this a sexual assault homicide or is this a hit and run? You have to work them and approach them from a little different viewpoint and uh, the way th of things that you're looking for. We're going to, of course, start with photography. We're going to then move along to trace evidence collection. We're going to take a lot of, a lot of time to look at the hands of the decedent. Very, very important pieces of material. Uh, we're going to also look at gunshot residue. When we get all of these things done, we're going to move to the sexual assault kit. <coughs> we're going to then remove the clothing and finally do a final survey. And this is the scheme we're going to follow this morning in talking about what we do. 
as I said, we get that request in, we look at the history, we're, we're really big into security of our bodies as they come in. Who requests this service and who provides the history to us? Typically, the pathologist has received information. He or she wants this case worked by trace examiners. Or the local law enforcement agency specifically requests, we don't want anybody to touch that body until the trace evidence team has gone in and done their thing, is now what it's referred to, uh, wh where we're going to recover evidence from this body. Um, you know, I want to just stop and share with you my first autopsy experience. You remember your first, right? Everybody remembers their first. Um, mine was a little lady that had been beaten to death with a hammer. She was in her 80s. It was a horrible crime scene. It was uh, one of the first crime scenes, well, no, not one of the first crime scenes, but one of, the, one of my early horrible crime scenes. And I had spent a lot of time on the crime scene the body had then been transported to the medical examiner's office, and I was requested to go and assist in any way that I could with evidence collection at the autopsy. Of course, I'm new and young, much thinner. And I'm standing in the corner kind of watching. In comes the pathologist, and first of all, he's singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And he continues that throughout the autopsy. Uh, <laughs> and he begins to make a few notes, there are no photographs. He takes the dress, immediately takes the dress off of the victim. He wads it up and he throws it over into the corner where it hits the wall and falls to the floor. And I'm standing there going, you know, I'm in shock. <laughs> this is wrong, I think, I know. Um, again, I'm young, I'm a rookie. I'm not at that point willing to say what should be done at that point and the autopsy proceeds to conclusions of many versions of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. When we look at security issues of our bodies, our, and, and let me mention this too, in the state of Texas, when we look at the criminal code of, uh, uh, the code of criminal procedure, there is a chapter as there is in every state of, of some kind of legal proceedings that dictates how your deaths will be investigated. And it is different throughout the United States in every state. And in Texas, it states that the body is the jurisdiction of the medical examiner. The local law enforcement has jurisdiction over the scene. So it becomes a, a situation where they, those two entities must work together to get the job done. And in working together, this sometimes, you know, ha has not always gone smoothly, but we're, we've come a long way since the old days. Our investigators go in, they know what they're looking for. They know the signs that they want to see on the body. They know that this body's probably going to be processed for trace evidence if it's a homicide. They know all they're doing at the scene, as far as the body goes, is wrapping it up like a burrito in a white sheet, a clean white sheet that's never been used. They are going to transport that body to the medical examiner's office. We have taught them if they see those fragile types of evidence, hairs, fibers, paint, large pieces, anything they see that could fall off because we've been told on numerous occasions, well, did you see that hair on the hand? By the time we get it, no, I didn't see the hair on the hand. We teach them they should be collecting those things, photographing them first and then collecting them. Uh, very important little things that they can do. Those bodies are then, we've developing in just the last few weeks, a new procedure to seal the bag at the scene to maintain that security till it comes into our office. It is going to then go into a special room where we are going to have uh, access of that body. We're going to cut the seal on the bag and then be able to process that bag effectively without anyone coming in. It's, it's, we have a room away from the major autopsy suite uh, where nobody is coming and going and we maintain total security in that area. And then we do have a forensic photographer that does assist us Monday through Friday, like all the bodies come in then. Um, <coughs> no, no hard feelings there. Uh, we take our own photos and on other times, other occasions. But 
Um, that is really essential. We start the photographic procedure the same way you would at a crime scene. We're doing overall photographs. We're doing mid-range and we're doing close-ups. We're doing them in sequence. I can't tell you the number of times I've been asked to evaluate a, a gunshot wound and when I go to look at it, it's like, okay, is this a buttocks or is this a breast? You know, it's all in the way you look at it. But so you have to have those far away close up, uh, overall mid range and close up to get that real perspective of what you're looking at. Photography is tremendously important. It's part of that documentation process. And along with photographs, we are going to be taking notes constantly about when we got there, what's going on, who's present, what we're finding. We're going to do that methodical search of that body, head to toe. And Kelly's going to tell you a little about that. 